Welcome to the wood shop. Steve here again. Today we're staying with the uh, garden theme and we are building a little project. This is called as a cold frame inspired by the book Raised Bed Revolution by Tara Nolan. Now their plan, I call it a little garden box. I don't know uh, I don't know what the real name of this is, but that's what I'm going to call it. Now in the book, basically they took an old window, built a frame like this, and then now you've got yourself like a little mini uh, greenhouse. For me, I just want cheesecloth on here. I could do whatever. I could put a piece of plexiglass on here and have that little mini greenhouse, but I don't really need that. I am just interested in growing some radishes, maybe some broccoli, and keeping the little uh, butterflies and the little moths and bugs and flies off of everything. Simple project. Uh, we're just using spruce once again. Uh, cedar would be the ideal thing, but it's very, very expensive right now. I've got a piano hinge here. You can make this pretty interesting with some nice looking hinges. Just keeping it simple. We got a bit of a slope here. You could build this square, but that'd be kind of boring. So this is my interpretation of a cold frame, which I call a uh, growing box. And definitely a project that you should take on. If you're uh, a real green thumb, I can see the big benefit of having one of these. So follow along, step by step, and I'll show you how to build it. All right, first thing that we're going to do, of course, in our little growing box, like that's what I want to call it, we're going to cut up our wood. So I need, for just one level, we're going to do it two levels probably, uh, I need one at 24 because the box I'm going to build for my specific little spot is 24 by 21. So I'm going to need one at 24 inch. Two at 19 and a half and one at 21. So let's get those cut and then we can go on to designing the slope and everything else that goes on top. All right, it's going to get a little noisy. This is going to be our base, and now I'm kind of thinking maybe this will be enough. Maybe I don't have to go too high. So I'm going to try one level. I can always add more later. So basically, this is going to be the footprint, and then what we're going to do on the sides, come down on an angle like this, and then we'll build a frame with a hinge. So I'm going to put this together first, but what we're going to do is we're going to do some pre-drilling here so that when we put our screws in, it's not going to uh, split the wood.
All right, now it's just a matter of screwing it together. A couple screws. Alright, bases together. Now I'm just going to draw a line from the top corner. I'm going to leave about, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch down here. And actually, what I'll do is I'll actually cut another piece down at the bottom here. So let's draw that out. And we'll cut that with a skill saw. Gonna find a straight edge around here somewhere. This is just a piece of flooring transition that it's pretty straight. I'm just going to put a little check mark to know that that's the good one. Okay, I'll cut that with a skill saw. So we've got these, uh, the sides, the top sides, I guess you want to call it, cut on the angle. So now we've got to put a piece in between and I want to slope it as well so everything's all the same. So we've got to determine what that angle is. Now basically all I'm going to do is I've got uh, an angle finder here. And I'll just put that up against there. And we are at 13 degrees. So I'll cut my piece in between and then on the table saw, after I get it cleaned off, I'm going to cut one at 13 degrees. So when I cut this, this angle here, I used my gauge and determined that this was 13 degrees. Now, if you haven't got a gauge, a lot of people don't. So what I do is, if you don't have one, you can just lay this on the table saw, bring your blade up so it's nice and parallel to the end cut, and you get your degree. Just that simple. Now you can see it coming together now. We probably could have built it all kind of square, but that wouldn't have been any fun. This is a little bit more of a challenging and aesthetically, you know, when it's in the garden, it's going to look so much nicer. If that really means anything, I don't know. 
But we'll put her together and I'm sure it's going to work. So there we go with this. We got to fasten that. So we are going to put a two by two little cleat in here. I'm not going to put anything here because it's strong enough as it is, unless I go another another uh, height. But we'll screw it here, here. I got to build a little piece to come across here. That's pretty simple. So for tonight, that's going to be about it. Tomorrow, we're going to build a frame. And then we'll hinge that with a piano hinge. And then I'm going to cover that with uh, cheesecloth. Now, I'm only going to use this, you know, in the summer or in the, in the late spring. I'm not going to use it when it's um, really cold. So I do not want to put a piece of glass or plexi on there. I just want to keep the bugs out. So that's just going to cover it with cheesecloth. So uh, till tomorrow, pretty happy. That didn't take very long. So far, it's not too complicated. See you in the morning. Morning. Well, we're back on this little planter. Cold box, whatever you call it. I'm really not too sure. Anyway, today I want to get started on my little lid here. And what I got here is from the lumber yard. I got some, uh, this is just, they call it three by one, it's actually two and a half by one, two and a half by three quarter. And I'm gonna build my lid out of this. And then what I'm gonna do to put it together, I'm gonna half lap it. So I'll just take a little bit off of this one, off the next one, put it on top, and I'm gonna glue it with uh, urethane glue. So I wanna get started on that so it got a chance to uh, set up. Now, your lengths are going to be a little bit different now because we got a, we're cut on an angle. So this one here happens to be 21 and a half, 21 9 16 21 and a half will work just fine and dandy, by 24. So, I'm going to cut four pieces and then I'm going to go to the table saw and uh, figure out my half lap. All right, let's get this cut up. table saw set up here and it seems to be pretty good. So what we're going to do is just nibble away, take our time and it's a lot better than using a chisel. Make sure you got your T square.
got everything all cut. Half laps are all done. It doesn't take very long at all. And if you have to do any of the cleanup, you just take a chisel. And it doesn't take long. Now this project is going to be outside, so make sure you're using the right glue. I'm using this urethane glue, it's one with the uh, gorilla on it. I like it. It expands, it's waterproof, and I've done projects that have been outside forever and it just, it just really, really holds on. Now if you use the uh, yellow glues, you have to make sure you get the one for outside, and even then, I don't know if they're as good as, a, as the urethane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them. I've actually just got a piece of plywood down here so it's relatively flat. And then I'm going to brad nail it. I've got some 5 8 brad nails in here. And uh, we'll go with that. Now with this urethane, a little water helps activate it. So I just got my little spray gun here. We'll get too much on here. This stuff will expand and go everywhere. A little bit on that edge. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one brad nail in it. That way I got a little bit of a pivot point, so when I square it up, if that makes any sense. Now the lap joint is a pretty, uh, Pretty tough joint. We could have put this together with uh, pocket screws, but I don't think it would have been as good. And if you haven't got a table saw, you could use a skill saw to make a few cuts along here. When you're out in the field, that's what you got to do. And then you just take your chisel and clean it up. There's a little spot there, there. Clean it up here. Nail it from the back side here. And I moved it. Looks pretty good. Hmm. For some reason, the nail's not going in. That one worked. Already you can see it foam in here, looking good. So now I'm going to put this aside, and we're going to let her set up. 
All right. That's going to be our top. I'm just cutting the fill piece for the bottom of the top. So it's going to kind of look like that on an angle there. You got to kind of fiddle around and make it work. cleats here and those are going to go down in here kind of hold everything together now what I'm going to do the whole idea for me is I'm probably just going to grow some radishes and some different things in here but I may put some uh, uh, some broccoli and those are other things that need to be protected so what I may do is build another base and just put a little cleat on the on that base, lift this up, put another layer underneath here, and then I can get whatever height I want. But for now, this is going to work. So we'll just install him, but I'm going to install him later. I've got a job to have to go to, and funny how work just gets in the way of fun. But we'll be back. See you in a bit. Well, this is what we had to wake up to this morning. Middle of April, kind of typical. Kind of takes the uh, wind out of the sails when it comes to gardening, but it's still warm in the shop, so. But we got to finish up our little planter box here. So it's time for some assembly. All right, first thing I did, I just, sand this up a little bit it feels really good like that is nice and strong so I just rounded the edges over because I'm going to put some cheesecloth on there and got myself a little piece of uh, I had this laying around just piano hinge you can use whatever kind of hinge you want so we're going to mount that but first of all let's put the box together I had big plans today, I was going to take the truck out, go for a drive, but not now, not with all that snow. Alright, our cleats, oh, I'm going to have to go on a walkabout here and see if I can find them, here we are. where they go as long as it's not going to be above the top here. I've got mine about a quarter inch from the top. Kind of looks good.
If you're wondering, I'm just using some three inch uh, deck screws for putting this all together. for that one. somebody else helping you, but when you don't, what I'm going to do, line it up, kind of get it uh, fairly straight where I want it, and then I'm just going to mark it. spot there where I can mark and put a screw in. Get it started. So, I'll only put a couple of screws in and then I'll test it, make sure it's working good. And if I'm happy, I'll pin her down for good. Pretty good. I think that's going to work. Hopefully, it's going to keep the flies out of there. All right, throw on a couple more screws. See, I'm using a screwdriver and not a power drill. I really, really don't want to strip these out. And that can happen if you're using a, a drill or driver gun. just lean up against wherever or else you could put a stick in here if you needed some air. I'm not going to put some sort of a mechanism in here that you know clicks it up or down. Don't think it's really necessary. All right happy with that. Now I'll show you what I am going to do. On mine like I said before I just want it for radishes maybe some broccoli 
and to keep the butterflies and the little flies off everything, I'm going to just use some cheesecloth. Now if you're in a colder climate, well, I'm in a cold climate, but I'm not interested in putting something out early. But if you want to, you could just take a piece of plexiglass. Uh, the original plan, the idea for this box came from just using an old window. So if you do have that, that would be kind of cool. But then you've got yourself a little bit of a greenhouse. I'm not interested in that. I just want something that's going to keep the bugs out. So I'm going to use some cheesecloth. Looks like I just have just enough to do it. Yeah, so I'm just going to staple this to the side. Maybe even wrap it underneath and staple it from underneath. And that's going to work just awesome. You get the drift. What do you think? Something you want to build? It's not too bad. Alright, I'm going to go find a stapler and hammer this in. I like it. All I got is my roofing stapler here. I just got my big stapler, my other one with the hand one of course is at the other shop, but it works. So just keep everything nice and tight, start in the middle, work your way around. I think that's going to work. I didn't go hog wild with the uh, staples because when this wears out or gets a hole in it then you don't want to take it apart. Might put a couple more back here. But there you have it. I think that's going to work. So once again if you want it higher, let's say you're going to put broccoli or cauliflower in here and you don't want the little white butterflies, build another base like this one and just put a couple cleats in there and just set this right down on top of it and then you can get that extra height that you need. But this works good. Uh, when the plants are little, you're going to get a little bit more sunshine in here and when they get bigger, you just put the base down and away you go. I think this is a nice little project. Perfect. Well, I hope you uh, have as much success as I did. This was a, I like this project. So, until I find another one, enjoy the spring. <laughs>